I could barely see out of the mask. I could see only directly in front of me. I had no peripheral vision at all. So that made the chase sequences very difficult. Gunnar's mask had ridden up on him, and uh, he was with the chainsaw. And he, you know, and of course now we're doing a long shot, so the cast and the crew are all like, you know, 50 yards away. And the perspective, you could see it plain as day. Where he's getting closer and closer and closer, and he doesn't realize it. He's about to cut her in half in real time. And everybody's going, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and Gunnar is meanwhile thinking, I'm really doing a good job. Boy, they're yelling for me and yelling me on. <laughs> he's just about to kill this woman, you know. <laughs> you know and Toby's going, well, let him get a little bit closer. <laughs> My favorite scene to shoot was actually the dance at the end. I just started swinging the saw and kind of stamping around. And then I noticed, and they cleared everybody away, and I could barely see out of the mask. And I noticed that there was the cameraman standing there with the camera on me, and Toby was standing behind him. And then they would move around me as I moved. And at one point, I had sort of swung the saw, and I realized that Toby had ducked. So the reason it was such a pleasure to do that scene is I started swinging the saw at Toby. I was imagining that I was going to kill Toby with the saw. So I, it was with great pleasure. That's when I started really dancing around and spinning and swinging that saw, was that I wanted to scare them with what I was doing. I wasn't angry at Toby. I thought he was great. I think it was just the frustration and the sort of, just the desire to do, to do something back, you know, after suffering for four weeks of shooting. But Chainsaw has this reputation for being so uh, uh, visceral and bloody and gory, and and you know it isn't. And uh, I mean, the blood's there; it's dried on the walls, and then and the girl on the meat hook when you know when you when I pan down her body to show the wash tub underneath it is obviously to catch you know a lot of fluid. There's nothing dripping from her. It's just you put it together in your mind because it makes sense. Chainsaw One had was was a, a play about morality uh, in, in a strange way and family values, and it was all bubbling up out of the times and out of Watergate. And once again, I underline we we found out uh, as a na naive students such that that. Hey, they, they don't always tell you the truth. So it was about a film about a bad day. You know, for everyone, actually a bad day for Leatherface. And everyone. <laughs> the spot that we shot Chainsaw One on is now Dell Computers. And the house, they moved it to another little town and turned it into a restaurant, but just the house, and, but, but without any reference to what it is. I would have taken it, I would have turned it into a barbecue restaurant straight away, and you know, it would have been fun. The remake idea has been around about four, three, four years. I got a call from the casting people because they were interested in having me be in the movie. And the first thing out of this casting person's mouth is this is a retelling of this film now this time it's going to be a dark psychological horror it's not going to be a bloodbath like the original and I thought have you ever seen this movie I wonder if they get it and I wonder why they need to remake the film why do you need to remake a movie that already did its job really well if it's successful and becomes a classic it's going to be remade and, and, and I've, I have um, kind of, uh, uh, you, you know, I had, I had to have been a little philosophic about that. And, and, uh, and it's a fact, you know, it's a fact. It's a, they, they, you know, they remade Frankenstein, remade Dracula. And, but still there's only one original. <laughs>